Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here today with the 10th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand I played from a $10 buy-in tournament. And this hand may look extraordinarily straightforward to most people, but really there's a lot that goes into it, and this is a spot where a lot of players really mess up their hand. So again, like I said, it's a $10 event, and as you see, we have a player limping under the gun and then a player calling in second position. And I wake up a pocket kings, and right here I have to figure out how to get my whole stack in. Because right here, you are not, you should not be concerned with trying to win the blinds or pick up the pot. Your main concern whenever you're this short in a tournament is to get a lot of money in pre-flop and then force your opponents to go all in if they hit any sort of pair whatsoever or you know, possibly get them to spaz out pre-flop by inducing them to shove. So right here, I, the worst thing I could do is do something like go all in or even make it a more standard raise like, you know, 750 or 800 if I was deeper stacked. Like, if we, if everyone here had, um, you know, maybe 15,000 chips, I would make it maybe 750 basically every time, because then you want to get money in preflop and you want to get value out of your opponents. But right here, the way we're going to get value is by doubling up. And notice that if I put in just a small raise preflop, it's going to be very easy to get my whole stack in on the turn or the, on the flop or the turn. So right here, I think something like 375 is going to be very good. We're going to induce two callers, most likely. Most of these, both of these guys are probably going to call. And uh, that'll be fantastic. And then if the flop does not come with an ace, I can then bet maybe like half pot on the flop, then shove the turn. If the flop does, does come with an ace, I'm probably going to check fold, or just try to check and get to showdown. So we do make it 375, and we get cold called behind, which is always good, because this guy obviously has a worse hand than King's. He probably has something like a pair suit to connect or something like that. But in this spot, if your opponents are paying attention, and they're paying attention to my game, they should know that I have a very premium hand here. However, this is a $10 game where I've never played with any of these players before, and they just simply are not going to be aware that this is how I p would play kings and aces and probably even queens. Uh, luckily for me, the under-the-gun guy goes all in. And right here, some players think, oh man, he limp shoved under the gun, he must have aces, so now I'm going to fold my kings. And obviously that would be absurd. Uh, just because a guy does the limp re-raise does not mean at all that you should just put him on exactly one hand. And you do see this happening from time to time with amateur players. But right here when he does this limp re-raise, I think his range could be fairly wide. Something like maybe sixes are better, and then also maybe something like ace-king, ace-queen, maybe even hands as weak as king-queen. But since I have two kings in my hand, it makes it pretty unlikely. So we're probably looking at ace-queen, maybe even ace-jack, and then a lot of the medium pairs. Um, but if this guy did know my range, which is like aces and kings and queens, a good play would probably be to just fold, because whatever he has is not really going to be getting great odds. I guess if he has a small pair, he can probably call here and set mine, but... Even then, it's pretty gross. But actually, I'll talk about his hand and the way he should play his hand more in part two of this video where I discuss how to how the hand went down from his eyes. So anyways, 375, I think, is about ideal because I think it will get us two callers a lot of the time from the two limpers. And um, as you see, players will call behind. It's not too expensive. And also, from time to time, this guy will just shove because he doesn't know what else to do. He doesn't want to see a flop with his pocket sixes or ace queen or whatever so he's just going to go for it and I of course call this guy folds and we do get it all in against ace queen in a spot where if I made it maybe 800 preflop he may have found a fold because then he doesn't think he has fold equity one thing that you really want to make sure your opponents think whenever you're raising is that you are capable of folding and right here say I put in um, 800 out of this 2700 stack Everyone knows I'm not going to fold, so that means they're only going to go all in with value hands. Whenever I make a smaller raise here, that will induce them to go all in with hands that are not necessarily value hands, like, you know, pocket sixes. So we do get it all in, and we hold up and win a very nice pot and get a double up. And that really is the goal whenever you have a big hand like Kings. You're not looking to steal a small pot. You're looking to win a big pot, and that's exactly what we did in this situation. So check back for part two, and I will discuss my opponent's play. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.